Welcome to another episode of Casino Regina Turf TV. Rider fans, we're coming to you from the office of Rider Equipment Manager Norm Fong. Normie with all the euphoria over the retro jerseys. I want to talk jerseys on this episode of the show and some Pat's jerseys too if we can because just found out you were behind that. Uh, talk about these retro jerseys and did you ever see a firestorm like we did over the Labor Day weekend? I've never seen that before. I, I think that the fans, when they've seen the actual retro jersey, uh, we're quite excited as opposed to the ones that we sold in the store. Mm -hmm. Explain to me how you ordered them, how you came up with the design. Uh, well, we came up with the design through some jerseys that Coach Hobson had. And uh, once we seen the design of the jersey we wanted, it was tough to get the UCLA stripes on a modern day jersey because uh, if we'd have ordered the older style of jerseys and made them exact, we'd have had 10 inch sleeves and and uh, non-tapered body so uh, the closest we could find was the Indianapolis Colts uh, so we called down there and got some uh, jerseys uh, uh, sent that we could look at from there we went to the manufacturer who made us some replicas and once we got the sizing we were off to the races and uh, and then the helmets too the skunk stripes on the on the top the old style Sheridan Cavalier Safeway logo, they call it. You had to individually decal all those. Yeah, we did. Uh, and, and that was a bit of a surprise. The players knew that we were going to change the logos on the helmet. They didn't know we were going to put the stripes on. So uh, nobody in the organization other than myself and my staff knew we were doing that. And when the players came the morning of the game, uh, they were just amazed at how the stripe kind of set the whole package off together. And it really turned out nice. So we were pretty pleased. Do you know the plans when you're going to wear them again? Uh, my guess is we'll probably wear them if we wear them again on Plaza Weekend is my guess. All right. And talk about back. We have to go back to the 60s and 70s for retro because you guys changed the jerseys in the 80s to the new logo and the new style and added gray. Talk about that and who designed that logo. Uh, actually, the, the logo was designed by, uh, if I'm not mistaken, it was an architect at Sask Power. Uh, we did that, I want to say, in... 1985 if I'm not mistaken. The original jersey design was done at Russell. Uh, Russell's an athletic company was huge in the States. Uh, we wanted a stylized S and we couldn't we couldn't put it together and so uh, we took the Seattle Seahawks logo and incorporated our S into that and that's how we got the helmet logo and the jerseys we started as you, if you go back and remember with what we call the barber stripes, barber pole stripes on the sleeves, and then we cleaned it up to what we basically have now. Mm -hmm. And then the black jerseys, which Roy introduced uh, earlier on this decade. Much uh, argument towards that, but there wasn't in the 80s, you said, when you guys changed the logo. No, I, when we changed the logo, I think the people were looking for something a little different, and uh, we were one of the first teams to go to the black, and, and uh, black is a piping color of the Rough Riders, and uh, uh, Roy really liked the black, and so uh, we did a set of jerseys, which I think are outstanding. Mm -hmm. um, if I were to do it again, uh, I would reverse the numbering and make the numbers white on green instead of green on white, because they're extremely hard to see from the press box. You're telling me. But uh, you really love jerseys, don't you? Not just your own. NHL jerseys, everything. You, you kind of... That's your, your uh, fetish. Yeah, I, I collect jerseys. I always have, and... and uh, I could kick myself in the rear when I was with the Pats. Um, Del Wilson had a set of uh, what I call the old wool jerseys uh, sent to our team uh, by Montreal. And he just, when we moved to the new rink, he said, do what you want with them, get rid of them. And, and so I gave probably 80 of them to the kids that were on our team at that time. And those jerseys are worth probably in good condition anywhere between a thousand and two thousand dollars a jersey right now. Norm is an equipment manager for, by the way, how many years? Uh, this is my 33rd over here. With the Rough Riders, you have a stunning array. We'll have our cameraman, TP, turn around and uh, talk about these helmets and where they all came from. Well, they come from all over the place. I originally, when I started, the Calgary Stampeder equipment guy had quite a few helmets and I thought that'd be kind of neat to collect some helmets. So, uh, through different GMs and different players. I wrote to some of the teams and, and uh, usually we just exchange the decals because a helmet is a helmet. 
But a couple of teams like Detroit and San Francisco uh, actually sent helmets, the actual helmets. And uh, it was okay earlier in my career, but now customs and duty is so expensive that it's almost impossible to get the helmets in now. So we just exchange the the decals and paint the helmet up or get one from a high school that's broken. Kind of led to this uh, collection. collection that it's just getting out of hand. Well, is there one helmet on this wall that's sort of special to you or has an interesting story behind it? Uh, I guess if there's a special one, it would be the Michigan Panthers. I helped start that program, and uh, it's it's kind of neat to... Uh, okay, which one's that so Tony can point it out? Uh, it's just over here, the gold one with the big panther on the side. There you see, Tony. It, uh, it's kind of special. I met some pretty neat people uh, going down there for a couple of years that I went, and... Uh, it just kind of has a soft spot in my heart. And are you surprised, lastly, how crazy people have gone over these retro jerseys, trying to get them, talking about ripping them off people? Ivan was wearing an old Goldsmith jersey on Labor Day weekend. He was told not to leave this locker room or else he'd have had it ripped off. Yeah, that's true. And, and we have, uh, I have one of Steve Dennis in the closet and one of uh, Gary Lewis, and that's about it for the really old style. And we actually went looking... I know the Riders in the early years gave all their jerseys to the Rams. So you'd have to go to people who played for the Rams to find the actual Rider game jerseys now. All right, Norm, thanks for this. You're welcome. All right, 33 years, Rider Equipment Manager Norm Fong. And look out, you people that work for the Rams. These fans will be coming after you. Hi, right, this is Kerry Joseph, quarterback for Saskatchewan Rough Riders, coming at you live on Turf TV. Here just chilling out in the apartment once again. This has become my set. My, my my set for KJTV is my apartment. It's my favorite place to hang out, to relax, to enjoy after a hard day of work. You no, know, just getting ready for for this upcoming game against the Montreal Alouettes on September 29th at 1 p.m. here at Mosaic Stadium. It's another sellout. You know, we're coming off three straight losses, but as a team, it's no panic button has been pushed. We've been real positive. We played well last week. I mean, the the fans were great. It was real loud in that stadium. Almost reminds me of another Labor Day Classic. That's the type of fans, that, the support we have in that game. And we're looking forward to this upcoming Saturday. Hey, fans, be there. Be there with your noise makers because you don't know how much we appreciate that. It really helps us out there, gives us momentum against the team that's coming in trying to, trying to knock us off. It makes it hard for them. And it, it, we appreciate it as a home team to see you out there making all that noise. And this weekend is going to be a special weekend because this weekend we have pure late attack or hunger. This weekend is a food drive. So when you come to the game, make sure you bring any type of canned goods, any type of non-perishable foods. Drop them off as you come to the game. And if you don't have the food, you can make a cash donation because we do have, we do have to beat Edmonton. Right now they're sitting at 53,000 pounds that they raised. So bring your foods here to the game. Saskatchewan needs to be number one because that's what we compete for, to be number one. So help donate to this uh, tackle, for, tackle Hunger food drive by Pirillator. We're going to come out on top. Drop your canned goods off. There are going to be locations at the game. Drop your donations. If you don't have food, you can drop cash off. Thank you. We'll be looking forward to you on Saturday, 1 p.m. Be there or be square. All right, fans. If you don't have tickets to this upcoming game, on September 29th against the Montreal Alouettes, here's your opportunity. Answer this trivia question. What number did I wear in college at McNeese State University? If you can find that answer, email it in to TurfTV at PetersonMedia.com. Include your phone number so we can contact you if you have won tickets to this game. Don't wait. Get them in. Get on the Internet. Find it out. Once again, what number did Kerry Joseph wear at McNeese State University? And I played there from 1991 to 1995.